Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea for our daily update on precious metals and uh, other opinions that I might have. <laughs> uh, beautiful day out there in Miami, I guess. This is the Miami Coral Cam. Looks like lots of Sergeant Majors kind of floating around. Not quite sure what that guy is or that, but man, they got some... It's like a fish tank down there at this cam, and it's actually a natural cam right out of uh, here. The City Coral Cam is an underwater camera streaming from a live urban reef environment in Miami. If you ever get a little stressed out and you want to kind of just relax, uh, whether it's an evening, get yourself a glass of wine, whatever is your favorite drink, uh, you know, whatever you drink, uh, or in the morning even, a cup of coffee, just sit here. Take three deep breaths and watch this cam right here. I'm telling you, it'll lower your blood pressure by at least half. So, well, maybe I'm exaggerating just a bit, but uh, no less, what a great live cam. I, I wish I could find more of these. There's just two here in Florida. If anybody else knows any other live cams, let me know. Well, we're not talking about fish. I, I always talk about fish, but uh, uh, it's the way I start the show out every day. But uh, let's move along to what we're really here to talk about, which is, which is precious metal prices and let me just do a quick refresh here um, silver was down about 2345 2350 in that range when I first looked at it this morning didn't look at markets last night um, I just figured I'd give myself a rest and not uh, be concerned about it. It's going to be what it is anyways. Uh, no less, I'm not sure what the overnight markets look like, when and what happened, but we can see that the low is um, 1785 overnight and the high is 1798. Hovering again in that $1,800 level. Uh, silver uh, currently at uh, 2385 again. Oh, there's the low right there, 2342. Uh, let me just uh, expand that a little bit, 2342, and a high of 2386. We're currently sitting at near that high at 2385 right now. Uh, and platinum down 86 cents, uh, 952 to 965, the high, kind of sitting right in the middle where it was. And palladium, really, who cares? Uh, sorry to say that, but there's probably one palladium guy out there on YouTube watching. <laughs> and I don't even know if they do videos on palladium, but uh, we're not going to do it. Um, hey, let's move along to uh, the misery index. I've talked about the misery index. And before I do that, i got a couple of interesting things I'm uh, going to talk about today. We're going to go over ZH. We're going to go over the, over the AIER. Not much to talk about there, but a few articles I'd like to point out that you may want to read. Uh, and then we're going to go on to uh, uh, the topic, uh, uh, you know, the title of this uh, video right here. Uh, I've got some interesting thoughts on that. But we, we've talked about it before, but I'm going to go in a little more in depth and uh, talk about what another writer said. Uh, United States Misery Index, it kind of occurred to me, I'm going to, again, I want to do some comparisons with the Misery Index and precious metal prices and ratios and stuff like that. I'll do a little more in depth when I get some time to really kind of put it all together. Um, I'll, I'll get some graphs and things and uh, we'll do that. But meanwhile, I want to keep looking back on this or I keep wanting to go back to this uh, Misery Index because it occurred to me, uh, what's happening this year as far as, or uh, since since 2020, the start of 2020, uh, or the start of the closures and all the nonsense, but uh, uh, since the 2020, uh, what's exactly, what does the misery index look by month by month? And here we go. Uh, it appears that we're getting into uh, much higher territory. This is uh, 2020 uh, through the through that administration's uh, final months as well. Um, it was, you know, it was about eight. And if I'm correct, I think they said that the high is... Uh, Oh gosh, I got to go back and look, but we're sitting at a pretty much high right now. Uh, 2021. Uh, this is the beginning of the uh, administration, the new administrations. Uh, it looks like it actually went down a touch. I think there was some uh, hope there that something good might come from this, but we. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to say it. Uh, and then let's move along from there. And it looks like the misery index has been increasing steadily. Uh, this appears to be uh, the seventh month, so that's going to be July. Uh, so we're still got some months missing here on the misery index. I suspect this is when things started opening up a little more across the country uh, and the economics looked a little better. But since we've had that new D, uh, I'm going to just call it the D variant, since we've had that new D variant, uh, um, I suspect the misery index numbers that they're going to put in here are going to be quite a bit higher coming up here. Uh, let's see. Oh, hold on. I ended it in July. Well, nope. That's the last month, July. So, yeah, we will be waiting for some more numbers. Uh, if I was a betting man, I'd have to say that the misery index is going to be back up into that 11 or higher uh, for the current months that we're looking at right now and probably going to be increasing uh, quite steadily here. 
Uh, it is what it is, folks. Anyways, uh, I told you I'd start looking at that misery index more. I haven't had a chance to do it, but I will start putting together some charts. And uh, there's a lot of cool things on that misery index. And I encourage you to go take a look at yourself because I think you can uh, pick up a lot of cool things here. Uh, it's called. It's just type in United States misery index. They got their own website up here. Uh, it's called the miseryindex.us, and uh, they have all kinds of cool stuff. Index by year. Let me kind of scoot that down. Uh, index by month is what I was just looking by president, by Congress, unemployment rate by year. Uh, so, and the, the raw data down here for you guys that uh, are good with that kind of stuff. Oh, uh, well, so anyways, you know what I forgot to do? Flip the coin. I forgot to do it last Friday. We're going to do it real quick here. And I have the coin in my hand. That's what reminded me. And let's see what the coin says for what we're going to close at today or the latter part of the day. It looks like a bull. And I think this coin might be correct today. Um, so, Let's uh, go on to ZH here real quick. And uh, what's going out in ZH world? Not too much. I'll just make a few comments on things uh, uh, I see here, as you know, as you guys expect me to. Uh, panel of side, this right here. Uh, I guess we did need this article to tell us that. And uh, boy, that's a shame right there. Uh, uh, wow, look at that tax rate they got. Uh, Litecoin dumps crypto slide after Walmart confirms press release was fake. This is kind of interesting. Look at the look at that spike right there in, in Litecoin. I feel bad. I mean, there's got to be criminal charges for someone that uh, uh, puts out a fake press release in a company's name that causes people to lose a large amount of money. Uh, I'm sure there's laws against it, but uh, I was just realizing that's what the gold market is sometimes in the silver market. It's people that manipulate the money or manipulate uh, uh, markets using bad information or bullshit information. But let's move along from there. Uh, this is a black swan event potentially right here for China. Evergrande denies rumors of bankruptcy as a crisis boil over. Social unrest breaks out across China. Uh, again, I'm not going to go into all these articles. You can read them on ZH yourself for free. Uh, there's some good stuff on here. Uh, that doesn't surprise me right there. And uh, let's see if we can see anything that's more specific to gold and silver down here. Uh, I think we read this already. Uh, why a silver squeeze is not only possible but highly, uh, highly probable. Um, here, let me just click that real quick. And uh, yeah, I think we read this on Friday. And if we didn't, forgive me. <laughs> you can take a read on that. A little lengthy there. Uh, there was an article here I wanted to take a look at. And where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, what's wrong with gold right here? And, and the author says, absolutely nothing. Uh, he brings up a few points here and a couple things I wanted to... Uh, uh, gold, what's wrong with it? From spiking inflation, falling interest rates, and massive money printing, it seems illogical that gold, a touted inflation head, should be rising. Yet so far this year, gold has done little. Uh, this is done by Lance Roberts uh, uh, via realinvestmentadvice.com. Uh, pretty good site. I like this... Uh, uh, I like Lance Robert. He writes some pretty good stuff out there. And uh, let's kind of click on his site. So rather than take you to ZH, we'll take you directly to his web website and read what he has to say. Is gold really inflation hedge? One of the primary arguments for owning precious metals, particularly physical gold, is its effect hedge for inflation. However, is that still the case today? And this is uh, uh, the author asking this question. Uh, the, the chart below shows a non-inflation adjusted price and keys event through history. And if you take a look at this chart, you can see the um, uh, price of gold. Where is it? Nixon breaks the gold standard. Uh, and where are we? Peak inflation in interest rates right here. What is that? 1979, 1980. Uh, dot com crash, uh, financial crisis. So the U.S. And the author goes on, the U.S. being on a gold standard is a crucial consideration of the argument of gold being an effective hedge against inflation. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, the, the chart above, prices remain stable until the president next and ended the gold standard in the U.S. However, for this analysis, the question is whether the gold medal is or was a good hedge against inflation. Uh, timing is everything. And again, this is the crux of this article that uh, he's written right here, and I agree 100%. Uh, the answer is yes and no. With all things invested related, it's always a function when you get started. Um, uh, and, and give me one second here. Where where is right here? At first glance, uh, you can, you, for example, what he said here is uh, you can compare the stock market. Was your money better spent, better put? And this is what the author is bringing up. Since 1970, when Nexus took us off the gold standard to date, would you have been better off putting your money into gold uh, as a hedge, or would you have been better off putting your money into the stock market? Uh, and he makes some interesting points that that uh, are very true. And I've, I've said this many times before when people make ridiculous comparisons, whether it's crypto or whether it's uh, gold or whether it's stocks. It really is the time, the, the frame, the time, the time point that you're you're picking. So if you say, well, 
you know, gold was a terrible investment. Look how it performed between uh, 2000 and uh, uh, 2016. I'm sorry, 2012 and 2016. Uh, you're picking a specific time frame where it really didn't do much at all and went sideways down from its highs, obviously. Um, however, you can do the same thing with stocks. It's really all a matter of timing. And this gentleman, uh, his, his article down here kind of says, well, you know, uh, ideally, if you can buy gold uh, when you see the writing on the wall that everything's going to take a giant dump, and uh, uh, you should do that. But if, if not, you should be into other investments that are uh, going up in value. You should be in the stock market. And he's right. Diversification is very, very important. Uh, you know, I'd say the same thing. If someone said, Brian, should I, you know, should I put all my money in gold and silver? Absolutely not, you know, absolutely not. Uh, I'm not even sure what percentage to tell people. You know, I would say 20% at the max, and I'm just, I'm not an investment advisor or anything like that, my personal opinion, uh, based on uh, what I had heard from investment advisors, uh, advisors uh, uh, back in the 80s, and uh, uh, they were saying no more than 20% in, a, uh, in gold or silver. Uh, and typically, they were in the 10 to 15 percent of their investments in gold and silver. Now, I think if you knew that uh, the entire you you had you were privy, and we're gonna that actually gets into what we're gonna talk about next about this company. But uh, uh, if you're privy to information that told you that the price of precious metals was going to go up and skyrocket, then you jump in. You know, you jump in with both feet. And do you go more than 20 percent? Maybe I don't know. It depends on the data and the information that you have and, and what you think is going to happen. Uh, no less do I think that I think you should be well diversified. That means stocks, bonds, all that stuff. And again, not my market, stocks, bonds, equities, and that kind of thing. So I can't really discuss that. But what I can tell you is that uh, uh, I think the gentleman's got it a little bit wrong here to some degree because there is more than two ways to look at it. I mean, I view gold and silver as wealth preservation. Uh, so when you've made money in the stock market and you, you've taken that money and you're going to put it someplace safe, which is obviously, I don't think, a bank, a money market fund, or cryptos. I think the safest place to store money for wealth preservation is gold and silver. Now, uh, you've heard me say it many times over and over. Can you make good money in gold and silver? And that's what this guy points out. Yeah, you can make good money. In fact, you can get quite wealthy from gold and silver during a bull market. Uh, but, you know, don't buy precious metals with that specifically in mind unless you have some information uh, that tells you we're going to be running into a uh, epic bull market. And if you bought in right, you should make quite a bit of money. No less, again, stock market, equity markets are about investing. It's about increasing your value, increasing the money that you make. Uh, but at some point, you need to know when to get out of a specific company at its high or before they go bankrupt or whatever whatever the deal is or before the whole system kind of falls apart. Where do you put your money then? Well, you're going to put your money in precious metals, again, as wealth preservation. I think that's uh, if you look at it as wealth preservation, uh, you can't go wrong. So uh, I think the only problem with Lance Roberts right here is he's comparing investments with basically a uh, safe type of savings account that, you know, wealth preservation, which is gold and silver. Uh, it's two different things. Can you get make a lot of money with gold and silver? Sure. Uh, but that's not how you should view uh, gold and silver. You should view it again just as a safe place to put your money uh, where you know it's never going to go bankrupt. You're not going to suffer third-party risk. Again, it's all about safety. And as I said, yes, you can make a lot of money as well, but you should look at it as a safe place to put your money. That's primarily what, that's what I believe. Uh, A-I-E-R, not much to talk about here. American Institute for Economic Research. Some good articles out there, but gosh, if I read any of these to you, we'd be here for two hours. Um, I found them all interesting. Uh, uh, a subtle catastrophe. Uh, this was a good article. I recommend you read this if you got A-I-E-R on your bookmark bar. If you don't, I recommend you put it there. Uh, they, they provide, like ZH, different uh, viewpoints, different opinions, and I like that. I like that. I don't like being fed a single narrative, uh, and I'm sure many of you don't either. Uh, and that's what, unfortunately, you get from corporate media. Uh, subtle Castry, this is not what winning looks like. This looks like yet another president declaring his way to policy outcomes he wants by executive order uh, C style. Uh, James R. Harrigan, uh, good article, recommend you read that. Um, what does it have to do with gold and silver? Uh, not much, but <laughs> uh, these people are also talking about raising taxes uh, dramatically, too. So, uh, yeah, maybe you need to know more about these people so when election time comes around, uh, you can make a, a good decision. 
Well, uh, hopefully. And uh, let's, again, not much to talk about in AIER. So I'm going to move along to what the uh, 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 title of this video is. And first, let me start with uh, the company, Palantir. Palantir, Palantar, and I'm quite sure it doesn't matter either way. And uh, this is Palantir. They are a major uh, uh, AI company. They create artificial intelligence. Uh, they create uh, uh, programs for governments, programs for uh, the CIA, the FBI, all these different uh, covert agencies. Uh, they are the real deal out there. I mean, uh, again, when it comes to uh, artificial intelligence, uh, these folks build it for governments. So uh, let's take a look at uh, uh, what Palantir means, the, the, the name of the company. And now, I wasn't familiar with it, but uh, apparently it has something to do with uh, J.R. Tolkien's uh, Middle Earth Legendarium or something like that. Uh, it was Palantar, as far as the book goes, uh, was an indestructible ball of crystal used for communication to see events in other parts whether uh, of of the world, you know, this make-believe world that uh, Tolkien had, uh, whether past or future. So the, the name Palantar uh, uh, is basically a crystal ball that can see the future. They named their company after this, folks, and this is this company right here, Palantar. It's artificial intelligence. Uh, again, if you're not familiar with what AI is, AI is basically... Uh, it's supposed to be a human brain, but smarter and faster. <laughs> so uh, the future of robots, the future of computing. So uh, this is who AI is. And if you can see, they work in the bio uh, fields. They work in the uh, military. They work with the CIA. They work with governments. Uh, and they build software that empowers organizations to effectively integrate their data decisions and operations. More or less, uh, they've got an electronic or they've got a computerized crystal ball going on here, folks. And what's so important about this company? Well, we talked about it a few weeks ago, and uh, uh, the importance of it is, and let me move over here. Uh, well, here, before I get there, uh, Palantir Technologies is a public American software company that specializes in big data analytics. Headquartered in Denver, Colorado, uh, founded by Peter Thiel, Nathan Getlings, and Joe. Anyway, we don't need to know who uh, it was founded by. Oh, look, I didn't realize it. The company's name is derived from the Lord of the Rings, where the magical Palantiri were seeing stones described as indestructible balls of crystal. Uh, all right, so... You get where I'm talking about. You get what the company does. Now, what did the company do? Some of you know, folks know this. We've talked about it before. Uh, they bought $50 million in gold bars. They didn't buy it in ETFs. They didn't buy it in anything, anything else. This company that works for governments, helping governments predict the future, helping uh, 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 you know, covert agencies predict the future, and, and helping them uh, uh, work their data into all this stuff. Again, artificial intelligence, folks, uh, a company that's named after a crystal ball. What did they just do? They bought $50 million in gold bars. Why is that important? Well, think about what the company does. You, do you think that they bought this $50 million in gold bars uh, before they ran the data through their own top-notch system? Remember, it doesn't cost them anything to use their own systems, and they've probably got probably some of the best AI out there in the world, I would imagine. They probably, they probably got the number one crystal ball out there. And what do the people with the best crystal ball out there buy? They bought $50 million in gold bar. What does this tell you? This should be... Uh, <laughs> Uh, this should be very, very uh, telling uh, right here, folks. And I discussed this last time, uh, but we didn't go much into it. Let me quickly read Ronan Manley's uh, assessment of this. And uh, I think he kind of says what we were talking about when this happened a while ago. However, he goes into more depth and detail, uh, as he does. And uh, nice job by uh, Mr. Manley here. Uh, recently, Palantir Technologies, the secretive software company that collects and analyzes huge amount of data on behalf of clients, which include a broad array of U.S. intelligence and spy agencies, announced in a quarterly filing with U.S. SEC that it had purchased $50 million in gold bars as an investment strategy. Uh, no, folks, this is not a uh, fake uh, Walmart uh, press release. Uh, this happened a little while ago. Uh, it really didn't have a big effect in markets, and I didn't see too many people talking about it either, other than Mr. Manley here of recent. Uh, and he also he says here, a black swan event is an event which is difficult to predict, occurs rarely, but can have severe negative impact. The term is now commonly used when referring to unexpected shocks to financial markets. Uh, hand in glove with the U.S. And, and, and Ronan Manley goes into that, uh, this company, Planter, listed on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, who it's founded by. We already talked about that, and that they work with a lot of uh, U.S. governments. They work with uh, secretive agencies. So, 
probably more black swan events, so probably more than any other commercial technology company in the world, Palantir, due to its access to U.S. government and data and government's data around the world. Think about this, folks. Not only can they plug in their own data, not only do they have the finest crystal ball in the world right now, they also have data that's privy to, you know, that, that governments have. So think about how powerful this statement is. Think about how powerful that purchase of $50 million worth of gold was for Palantir. Now, uh, and, and why? And why? They ran the data, folks. Come on. It's pretty freaking simple to see. They ran the data through their own AI systems, which must be apparently uh, work most of the time. Otherwise, they wouldn't be as successful as they are. And uh, uh, they must have, the, the uh, software must have predicted some type of black swan event. And this is exactly what uh, uh, Mr. Ronan goes into. So let's, let's take a, or I'm sorry, Mr. Manley. I got his, uh, there we go. Mr. Manley. We'll call him Mr. Manley. Uh, so, and again, I said that before, but didn't go into the detail that uh, Mr. Manley does here. So when Palantir buys a large quantity of physical gold bars and states that it has bought physical gold as a hedge against a black swan risk event, then you better sit up and take notice because this is no ordinary corporate treasury investment and no ordinary company. Uh, folks, I think that uh, uh, I like exactly, uh, I don't even know what to say. Uh, he talks about where it might be stored, who has it. Uh, the company's owner, uh, the fact that they have privileged information and, and, and how they could come up with a decision like this. But really, all that need to be said, if you, if you knew your neighbor down the street had a crystal ball and you knew it actually worked most of the time, uh, wouldn't you listen to him? <laughs> so here we go. Uh, if Palantir is buying gold and they have one of the best crystal balls in the world out there, then I think, folks, you should uh, continue to buy and continue to stack gold and silver as well because silver is just going to follow gold as far as the ratios go. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, and, and actually, it's quite f uh, frightening because I kind of think that uh, uh, this company, Palantir, is, is uh, actually uh, planning on a black swan event. What could that be? Uh, war with China? I mean, I don't know. Uh, economic, another major economic collapse uh, like we've not ever seen in our history, uh, bigger than 2008 on an epic scale? I don't know, but something's happening out here, folks, and the guy with the crystal ball is telling us, uh, without telling us, that it is. Um, well, let's move into uh, Friday's video right here, The Golden Whale. <laughs> I like that title. Actually, I think I did a good job with that title, but... Uh, uh, here, let me pause this right here. I'm going to go over a few uh, uh, questions and a few comments here, and and uh, then we'll kind of shut it down for the day. Uh, Tom, no volume. Thanks for watching, all you folks here, uh, and I uh, appreciate. And I'm going to see if there's any specific questions. Uh, and again, I'd like to thank everybody and uh, a lot of you regulars that comment too. Really, I appreciate it. Uh, let's take a look and see if there's any questions here that I can answer. Um, Hmm. Not really. Just kind of comments on the videos. Uh, sorry about that. I should have read it earlier, but uh, I've had a busy morning. That's why I'm late today. I had to drop my car off to get the window tinting done. Uh, so not like you need to know that, but uh, here's my excuse why I'm running late uh, and why I didn't get a chance to look at all the questions. Uh, Sean Ames does ask me. I uh, love the video. Uh, I'd be saying... Second, would I be saving money to buy a quarter ounce gold monthly for three months and cash in uh, three quarter ounce pieces and pay the rest. Did I answer this video? Um, the Golden Whale. I feel like I answered that video either. No, no, I did not. Okay. Uh, so what would you be better off doing? I'm sorry about that. Let me just go back to that question. Um, to buy a quarter ounce gold monthly for three months and cash in the three quarter ounce pieces and pay the rest to get... No, no, just buy the quarters at a reasonable price. God, I thought I had answered this question. Um, one of the uh, quarters are real expensive right now, so try to buy the cheapest premium quarter ounces you can, or maybe French 20 francs or uh, uh, British sovereigns, which are really a good deal as well right now. Uh, but uh, no, I wouldn't. I, every time you trade something in for something different, you know, even when the dealer is going to give you a much better rate, you're still incurring costs. I don't see you... I don't see any need for you folks to keep incurring costs. Just keep stacking stuff. If you paid a little more than you should, don't go sell it. Or if you think it's ugly, don't sell it. It's just gold. It's just silver. Just hold it for that reason only. Uh, and again, you don't need to do trades. I would suggest you just keep buying your quarter ounces right now. Uh, and then uh, 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 don't worry about trading to a one ounce piece at all. You know, if you, if you're, if you're, if your budget says that you can only buy a quarter ounce so many, so much, you know, every couple months or every month, just keep doing that. And again, don't trade the stuff back in. Just stack it, put it in the corner, and forget about it. Uh, that's my opinion. Uh, thanks for watching, Sean. I appreciate it. And.
we're going to quickly run through this right here. Keep it local, folks. You know, uh, I only deal locally down here, so I can't, you know, if you live outside of my area and you can't visit me in South Florida, I really can't do any business with you. However, as you know, I always recommend find yourself a good local dealer and they should take good care of you. Um, and try to find more than one if you can. It's always nice to have uh, more than one source for your items. Uh, I advertise to be at Max SD Bullion and JM Bullion. Uh, it's because uh, because I can, and that's called being competitive, and my uh, expenses are much lower than they are. The other thing I can do much better than them is give you better advice. Good, ad Not better advice, but good advice as well. Uh, person to person. Uh, you get to speak to me, too. <laughs> so uh, I think that's worth something as well. Uh, no less, there's some good deals out there. As far as uh, silver trades right now, uh, there is a trade out there. If you can sell your 90% silver quarters and find the right guy, uh, he can uh, replace that with 100 ounce bars at a cheaper price. Uh, you can probably make yourself 50 cents an ounce or, 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 or trade in some uh, uh, or get more silver back from it uh, by trading 90 right now. Premiums are 90 are just crazy and I wouldn't recommend buying 90% right now with the premiums the way they are. It's just too high folks. 100 ounce bars are the best deal out there. One ounce bars are going to be the next best deal. Uh, and then tens. And uh, I've got a really cool deal. I'll announce it tomorrow for my local peeps. That I've got some really cool product coming in that you can buy almost the same price as generic one ounces. Uh, I'll let you know tomorrow what that deal is. Well, that's really about it, folks. And uh, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in Lauderdale by the Sea. Call me anytime at 954 493 8811 between the hours of 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. Happy to help you out with whatever you need. And uh, again, I encourage you, if you don't live in my area, please find yourself a good local dealer. Keep that money local, as they say. Get spent local, uh, jobs, business, community, you name it. Well, that's it. Have yourself a great day and uh, talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.